Hello, and welcome to the Thoughtfully Made podcast. This is a fiber podcast where we talk about all things making. Uh, my name is Amy, I'm your host. I'm a sewist, a knitter, a spinner, and what else do I do? I design patterns for knitting. Um, this is episode six, and welcome. Thank you so much for joining me. If you are a new viewer, thanks so much for giving my vlog cast, my little vlog a try and I hope you'll stick around um, and if you're a returning viewer thanks for coming back and being patient with me while you waited four months for a new episode or has it been five it's been five months almost I think so the last time we talked I was still living in Los Angeles and just out of frame was just dozens and dozens and dozens of moving boxes well we drove four days across the country and we are all moved in into our first home that we purchased um, here in st louis now and we're all moved in um, so it's taken me a while to kind of find my balance and get back into a routine but we're here now and we're gonna do a little vlog today um, so since we moved here and we're in our own home now, we have developed so many fun new activities and hobbies. Um, I really think St. Louis is a great place to raise a family in. Um, if you watched my last episode, you'll have heard me talk about it a little bit. The pace of life is a little bit slower here and the parks and recreation programs here are off the charts good. Um, this new park opened called the playscape which is like a naturalistic playground that's huge like multiple acres of just like rocks and mud rivers and uh, water installations and tree logs for kids to climb all kinds of really fun things so we've been getting to know the city a little bit as well as getting into some new hobbies that we didn't really have room for but now we do um, for example my husband Roy has gotten into espressos, so he bought an espresso machine, which has always been kind of like our dream as a married couple. So I am right now actually enjoying a nice little ice latte. And as you can see in this room, I've just got like plants everywhere. I've got like eight plants around me right now. So I've got, kind of gotten into the house plant life and I've been really enjoying them belatedly i know everybody else has like a million plants already but i've been really enjoying them as kind of not only as decor but as part of my morning routine just taking care of plants feels like it starts my day off on the right foot so how are you all doing i hope you're all doing well uh, let me know how your summer has been a whole season has passed since i last did a podcast and yeah, tell me what's going on with you. I know you're here for the five breathings, so let's get right into it. So the first thing I want to talk about today is what I'm wearing. Um, as you can see from this footage here, it's this huge, voluminous, amazing balloon sleep dress with a cross V, um, cross over V neckline and a big old skirt. And it's so big that I actually can't even show the whole dress in this room. Uh, so you're just gonna have to take my word for it because it's amazing. And it is the um, now very popular on Instagram and elsewhere on the internet M7969 from McCall's Pattern Company. I cut a straight size small and it's actually a little bit snug, but I'm pretty happy with it. Um, I made it from vintage linen in Marmalade from the fabric store, which is one of my favorite sources for linen fabric. And even though I thought that this garment would be a little bit hard to wear because of how dramatic the sleeves are, I actually wear it all the time, like to the park, to the grocery store, just 
absolutely everywhere so it's definitely a favorite right now around here um have you sewn this dress because i feel like everybody who sews has made one of these already so now i'm quite behind on it but i'm still really glad i made it and i'll be wearing it quite a bit this autumn i think um, it's still quite a bit hot to be wearing even this much sleeve um, so yeah that's what i'm wearing today now let's move on to some of my designs so the last time we spoke it was in april and i had just designed my first two sock patterns just to see how i feel about it and since then i have designed a shawl a dicky two more sock patterns a garment there's so much going on and while i can only show some of them today because a few of them um, are parts of collections that have not been revealed yet um, i just wanted to run you through all the things i've been designing including the stuff i had last time uh, just a quick overview of all the things i've designed so the first pattern that i released which was in may <laughs> like three days after we closed the house i thought it was a good idea to schedule a, re a release for the sock patterns and i released the boba socks pattern there they are these are actually called the boba time socks it would be nice if i got the name of my own patterns right i've talked about these a lot before so i won't like go on forever about it but uh thank you all for the very warm welcome for the boba time socks they're doing really well. Uh, they're available on Ravelry, Etsy, and Payhip. I'll put the links to all my web shops below as well as anything else that I mentioned today, um, as always. And as always, this episode is fully captioned, so hopefully you can also see what's going on if you turn on and enable the captions. So here's the second sample, which I don't think I've shown before, but these were knit by my good friend Phoebe out of Knit Picks. Um, the original pat pattern was written for 626 yarns in this Thai iced tea gradient with a boba colored mini. Um, but I also, where possible, I like to include like an affordable yarn option. So when I have time, I try to knit up like a knit picks or similar sample. And this is what my friend Phoebe made for me, which thank you, Phoebe. Very grateful for that. So this is a Nipix Stroll. Both of these are wonderful and I love them very, very much. So that's my two Boba Time Socks. And then in June, I released this beautiful sock, which I didn't intend to design. Um, I got the Sakura collection from Big Little Yarn Co. all the way back in, I wanna say May. And I just couldn't resist designing something with them. I'm gonna walk up so I can show you. That killing little lace detail. The heel and the toes. And actually, um, to date, the Wisteria Bloom Socks are my best selling pattern which I can kind of see why. Um, hold on. I can kind of see why because it has like these fun little segmented sections. Uh, you start with like a little ribbing and then you knit the Pico holdover edge, a little tiny bit of stockinette, and then you have contrast lace, then a short ribbing section, and then you've got you know something to do every couple hours so it really keeps you motivated at least it keeps me motivated when a knitting pattern has all these um short sections so that i can just blaze through the whole thing and actually um after i moved i immediately knit up another sample of it um this one i'll probably wear more often because i try to keep my samples pristine for pictures but this one was knit out of Woolberry Fiber Co. Just out of some scraps that I had around. The gray was not a scrap, the blue was a scrap. But um, yeah, so that's my second pair of Wisteria Bloom socks, which I love, love, love. I 
think it's really pretty and semi-solid like this too. I think it shows the lace and the pico edge even better. Come on, let's do the focusing thing. Yeah, there we go. All right, so that is the Wisteria Bloom Socks, um, which came out in June. Check that out. And then in August, or rather in July, um, my daughter Kaylee's birthday was on the 30th of July, so I ended up these Boba Time socks in a child size for her, and I released a child sizes version of Boba Time. So I'm gonna come up and show you the bobbles. Look at how cute that is. Oh my goodness. So these are a little bit ratty because she's already worn quite a lot. And these were knit entirely of scraps. Um, the main color was Explorer Knits in Great Barrier Reef and it has wonderful, wonderful depth. And then the contrast color is the same as my Wisteria Bloom Contrast. That one is called Sting. It's uh, from the Lord of the Rings collection by Woolberry Fiber Co. So that is the Boba Time mini socks and today I'm here to show you <laughs> brand new socks that I have knit um, so once I got here to St. Louis and I felt ready and able to design again and receive mail this is the first thing that I designed um, Elise at Sunday Fiber Co um, has been someone whose work I admired for quite a while um, because of her really beautiful colors and her interesting bases so i asked her to provide yarn support and she very generously agreed so i knit a pair of socks from her barefoot organic sock set and they look like this so it comes with this sock set comes with one main color and two contrast colors and I'll put them in a bar here so that you can see the color names. But um, it has a fold over edge that's worked with um, a provisional cast on it. And then you knit it together with a working side, which creates like a super neat finish. Let me see if I can show Look at that. It's a really clean finish on the inside. Not on the outside. And the cast on edge remains like the folding edge and the cast on edge are really stretchy. Okay, great. Okay, so fold over edge, bobble texture, um, bunch of color work that's really fun. Um, I feel like it's actually really hard to knit <laughs> this color work in more than one sitting because every time I sit down to knit this color work, and I'm on my fourth single sock now, so it's the second pair. Um, every time I sit, the color, sit down to knit this color work, I just do it from beginning to end because it's so fun. So this is a pretty engaging color work pattern. And then it has like a boring middle section with a cool little eye of the partridge heel, which is one of my favorite heels, um, one of my go-tos. And then all the way up to the toe cup work. So that is called the Dots and Dashes sock. Uh, I really enjoyed working with this base. It is Elise's Barefoot Organic Suck set. And it is um, a eco superwash uh, sock yarn with merino and nylon. And I love it because it, it is washable and I'm not worried about um, felting it, although I do hand wash all my socks. Um, but this is really washable. I don't worry about felting it. It has the strength of nylon, but it is a little bit easier on the environment and it blooms almost like a regular non super wash yarn, which I love. That's like one of the things I love about it. Um, the gauge is a little bit different than the other patterns that I have designed just because the yarn behave very differently for me, but it's fine. We'll get through it and I've also knit it in like regular sock yarn, uh, regular superwash sock yarn and um, I just sized up because um, this one blooms and stretches out a little bit more for me than regular superwash so just knit whatever you gotta to get gauge or size up and down, um, you know your feet best but it comes in four different sizes so you have plenty, plenty of stitch counts to work from. 
So that is the Dots and Dashes socks. It is out today and I'll put the links below. Let me put away some of these samples here. Oh, more coffee. So, let's move on to some finished objects. So, this is my moving sweater. The last time we talked, I think I had only bought the yarn. I hadn't, oh, excuse me, my allergies are different here in St. Louis. Very intense. <laughs> Ugh. Okay, so the last time I did a video here, I had this in yarn form, and the day that we moved out of our house, our old house, which I loved, um, I cast this on. And throughout the whole moving process, the unpacking, the loading, the driving, like the entire process, I knit on this, like anxiety knit on the sweater, and just a few days after our stuff finally got here because it was delayed for three whole weeks um, I finished it so this is the twinkle sweater by Midori Hirose you would have seen it around Instagram or heard me talk about it here last time but it is a color work sweater knit in Daruma Gemmo yarn and it is delightful utterly delightful Look at that stitch definition. My favorite part of this sweater is that after the cir circular yoke is complete, there's a little ragwam for the underarm increases. I think the little ragwam detail is so clever and results in such like a sporty and modern fit despite the more traditional um, circular yoke in the color work and I learned so much from this pattern like the neck has gorgeous short row shaping that sits just right and then the underarm bit makes it like boxy and sporty and cool but also well fitted like there's no weird drag lines from too many circular increases so while knitting this I really learned so much about sweater fit and construction and different kinds of ways to make a sweater perfect for my own body and i've been thinking about that a lot as a designer and i hope to deliver patterns as good as this one because seriously this might be like the favoriteest pattern i've ever ever knit so there's that hopefully the next time i talk to you it'll be cool enough to wear it but it's 90 degrees today i'm so pumped for autumn all right, let's move on. Okay, so while we moved, I wore this shawl to death so many times. It is the Humblebee shawl. It is by uh, Fiber Tales, who is also here on YouTube. Her podcast is delightful. You should check it out if you haven't already. I'm sure you are. Um, this hand spun is spun from Ingolnook Fibers from one of their mill blends, and I adore it. It is like sheeny with bits of Gotland and a little bit of sparkle, which I'm not usually into, but angle look, like somehow they always make it work. Um, it's tweedy and delicious and garter and just oh, everything I love. I love this so much. So um, I think it's a great shawl. It's in DK weight. Um, it knits up in a flash because it has a bottom up construction. So it knits up very fast, like by the end you just shush, 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 like very small rows. So it's a big triangular shawl. It's the perfect size for transitional seasons and I can't wait to start wearing it again. So there's that. I'm just blazing through this because I have so many. All right, next finished object. More angle nook fibers. So when we got here, this was probably my first spin in the new house. And I think that was really motivating because I finished this so fast. Look at that. I'll insert a picture of what the fiber looked like, but it was like instant love. When I saw it on their listing, I just hit order so fast. I still have other, I know like 
I'm not gonna show everything I acquired since my last video because that would be too many things. But I did acquire other things from them. So I'll be spinning those up. It's very exciting. So this one is, the color colorway was called Petunia Redux. And it's 50% Rambule, 25% Silk, and 25% Flax. And I spun it up into a DK weight yarn. Um, I have like 105 grams of it. Yep. So I'm not sure. Actually, no. This is... This was a six ounce braid. Ooh, that's exciting. So I have like probably five, 475 yards of it in DK weight. So I think next summer that's gonna be like a little summer knit since it's half summer fibers and half wool. So that is so pretty. Oh, look at those color changes. I love it so much. I'm so curious to see how it'll look spun up. Um, it was pretty straightforward. I didn't do anything special for the colors. I just spun it from end to end and then plied it in a two ply traditional. Um, oh, so bouncy and nice. Yeah, I don't know what, what else there is to say other than that. It's really freaking beautiful and I love it. All right, so on to a few acquisitions. I actually have way more acquisitions than this. But I can't show them all because that would make this video like an hour long. And they're also um, all for various ongoing designs that I'm doing. So I don't want to give too much away. But then I also really want to show you all the yarn. So I just selected a few that I thought might be nice. So the first is this yummy Wolfolk Tove which Wolfolk has kindly provided for a design. This is for a cabled vest design that I'm working on. Um, I should be casting on today or tomorrow, so watch out for the test call on my Instagram. Um, that should be coming probably mid-October at the earliest, so check that out. It's going to be really beautiful and really good for the transitional season so thank you Wolfolk for providing your support for this project it is such a bouncy and round and like beautiful undyed undyed yarn tove is air and weight and this is the color t00 and it's just the most it's like really hard to get the color right but it's the most beautiful creamy it's a little bit more creamy in person but this light wants to show it as like bright white. But there it is. And then the other yarn that I've received for a design is this one. I have been a longtime customer of Mother Knitter, which is the American distribution for Sandness Garn, I think is what they're called. They're a Norwegian yarn company and they've been around since according to this band since 1888 and they make a range of great affordable yarns so when mother knitter reached out to see if i wanted to do a design in their yarn i was like yes send me yarn i'd love to use more of your yarn um, i've used quite a few in the past i've used lying i've used alpaca silk which is one of my favorite yarns of all time I'll insert a picture here of the kid romper I knit from it that's so, so precious. Um, what else have I done? Oh, I've knit a kid sweater from Duo, which is a cotton, like a washable cotton and merino blend. I would recommend hand washing that one because I washed it quite vigorously and it did felt. So, like, just hand wash everything even if it says it's machine washable. That's my recommendation. Um, but for this, design which is for a color work pullover um, they have sent me three colors of alpaca wool which is 65% alpaca and 35% wool and look at these colors I think that this emerald kelly green is gonna be just delightful for this autumn and I can't wait to knit this up 
and share it with you. This one should be out sometime in the winter because it'll take me a while to get everything together and to test it. But those are some of the projects that I'm really excited about right now. Um, so what else is there? That's all my acquisitions that I can share right now. Um, I'll probably do another episode in like two or three weeks because I have a release coming up with Hinterland Yarns which I'm so, so excited about. It's like a super exciting collaboration and it is part of their fall collection. So um, subscribe if you wanna find out more about that shawl that's coming out and go check out the dots and dashes socks. If you are a sock knitter, I promise you won't regret it because all the tester versions that I have um, shared over on Instagram are incredible so if you love seeing a bunch of finished objects um, the tester versions are now available to see on Ravelry and on my Instagram um, which is at Amy Makes. I can also be found at that name just about everywhere else on Etsy on um, Ravelry and where else oh amyshermakes.com so I have a website now to where I consolidate all the things that I do related to fiber and making. So check all of those things out. Let me know what you think of all the things that I'm up to and which of these yarns are you most excited about seeing more of. Um, but yeah, I hope you're all doing well. Uh, it's very hot here and I'm really excited for the next episode because hopefully by the time I film it, it'll be cool enough to wear knits. So I can't wait for that. Um, have a great rest of your September and I'll see you next time.